Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this VFX project in Blender. And don't worry, there aren't going to be any jump scares, just some dancing robots. So let's get straight into it. First, let's get a video that we want to track. Last time I said you should use the Blackmagic camera app, but honestly, after a lot of testing, I've seen that, you know, it doesn't really matter what you use as long as your footage is steady. It can have some fast motion, but don't have any jittering movements because that's where the tracker messes up. If you have a gimbal, that would be probably perfect because that'll smooth out any jitters that your hand might introduce. Since I have one, I'll be using it for my video, but you don't really need it. I'm trying out the new log video recording mode on the newer Samsung phones, so let's hope that the color will look much nicer in the final product. For tracking the footage, I'm going to be using the Glowmap video tracker. To learn how to set it up, I'll link down my last video below and Polyfjord's video on how to set up both the Colmap and the Glowmap tracker. But one thing I will correct from my last video, that you will need to install the NVIDIA CUDSS toolkit along with the CUDA toolkit for proper GPU acceleration. You can easily install it on the website linked below. Just select the options that match your system and hit install. Next, put your video into the videos folder and run the bat script. While this is happening, let's get our Fazbear Cruise models into Blender. I found these models online, but you can use basically anything. They don't even need to be from Five Nights at Freddy's. It could be literally anything. So I found these three models online and I'll link them down in the description if you want to use the same ones. But all you need to do is drag the model files onto the Blender viewport and they'll be properly imported. Since the materials that they came with weren't really as realistic as I was hoping they would be, I have to make my own. The base cloth texture for all of them are going to be the same. So I removed all the base materials and created new ones and named them appropriately. I found this kind of fluffy grid PBR texture online that I can use as a base for all the animatronics. I made sure I had Node Wrangler enabled in the settings and I hit Ctrl Shift T to import all the PBR textures into the node graph. I then used HSV and color mix nodes and messed around with the settings to get the proper colors for each of the animatronics. I then had to add seams to unwrap the UVs. But before that, I wanted the seams to look like real seams, you know, like on cloth where the stitches come together. So instead of adding just a seam, I first beveled it and used a resolution of 3. I then selected the middle line by pressing Ctrl minus and scaled it by its normal axis by using Alt S. I then added a color attribute and named it seam. I kept everything white except for the part where the seam is. That was painted black. I did this by going up and using the selection as a mask. So nothing else gets painted except for the seam area that I selected. So I referenced that color attribute in the material node graph by using an attribute node to make the base color black and set the displacement and normal to zero in those specific sections by using mix nodes and the color attribute as the factor. Next, I wanted them to look beat up and used and not shiny and new. So I added a noise texture into a color ramp and connected that to the factor of a mix color node set to overlay with brown as the B input to make some places look a little dirty. I did the same exact thing for all the other materials that weren't just the base color. For example, the main other one was this black rubberish color. I achieved the rubber look by using a Voronoi texture and set that as the normal with a bump node to make it look a little rough. And I made that all look beat up as well with the mixed color overlay. I also added some sheen to the principled BSDF node to make the cloth look a bit more clothy. Another thing I added to make the outside look a little more fluffy was a particle system, specifically a hair one. I added them to hopefully make it look a little more fluffy, and I think it did the trick. All I did was add a hair particle system to each of the fluffy bits and create a separate hair material for each of the colors. I bumped up the count and interpolated it five times. I found five was a perfect amount that it didn't look like it was too less, but it also didn't take that long to render. I enabled the advanced options in the hair settings and increased the brownian and drag to make it look more realistic and not just straight. The endoskeleton material that they all came with didn't look that good either, so I had to create my own one. I just made a basic metal shader with a noise texture for displacement and a noise texture for rust, using the same techniques I used to make the fluffy bits look beat up. As for the eyes, to make them glowing, I added a gradient texture set to the circle one and added that to the power of the emission field to make the eyes light up but everything else stays metallic. So I then posed them to see how a final render would kind of look and I think they look pretty cool. Now that the base models are prepped, let's grab our glow map tracking data from the glow map tracker. 
For some reason, it seems like the photogrammetry tracker doesn't work for 5.0 yet, so I went back to 4.5 LTS to import the tracking data, and reopened it in 5.0 to get all the new features. To import your data, just go to File, Import, and open from Colmap Model slash Workspace. Then find the tracking data in the Scenes folder, and hit Import by clicking Nothing. On the right, you can also suppress distortion warnings because they don't really mean anything. Once it's imported, add an empty object and hit A. This will select everything in your scene while keeping the empty object as the main selection. Then hit Ctrl P to parent everything to it. Make sure your pivot point is set to the 3D cursor and rotate everything to make it look like the floor is on the floor and the X and Y axes are matching to your liking. Once this is done, to see if your track looks correct, you can add a plane to the floor and see if it's locked onto the floor. Normally it does track really well, but sometimes you may need to rerun the tracker or even re-record your video. Now we can just add the animatronics to the scene. If you opened up your tracking data in a new project, all you need to do is go to your old project, then hit A and Ctrl C to copy all your objects and you can paste it into your other one that has all the tracking data. Next we need to recreate the geometry of the scene, so we can get some shadow catchers to make sure that the shadows actually fall onto your footage. The floor and walls are easy enough, and stuff that has some neat geometrical shapes like cubes are also pretty easy. But for stuff like the couch is kinda hard because it has bends and curves and has an organic shape. So I tried my best to recreate it as close to the model as possible, but there's always gonna be a little jank, especially near the back and where the headrests are. But honestly, your eyes are gonna be on the animatronics and not the shadows, so I'm not too worried. So it's time to finally tackle the lighting. I got lucky because there aren't too many lights in my scene, but it is still a little harder to get the lighting to track without an HDRI. One thing though, is that some of the objects in the scene are pure white, so it's gonna be easy to get the intensity of the light a little more accurate. So I use the couch as a reference on how bright the lights should be, and I put the lights all around the scene. I place them in their respective angles, and I played around the, with the angles and a little bit with the intensity to get everything to look right, and I think I got it pretty good and it kind of does look like they're in the scene. Next, I needed props for them. Freddy needs a microphone since they're the lead singer. I found a microphone model online and I imported it and parented it to the right hand bone so I can easily animate while the microphone stays in its hand. Chica is the pianist, so I found another piano model online, but it was black and I wanted it to look red. So I changed up some stuff in the node settings. Luckily, it was quite easy because it was just a mixed color node with both of them set to black. So I changed them to red and the piano looked perfect. I next made a stand for it with some simple cylinders and some cubes. Finally, Bonnie needs a guitar. So I found a cool guitar model online and put it in the scene. But it was a little harder than the other two because I couldn't just parent it to its hand. Because when animating, I needed to stay in his hand while he's turning on. But when he's playing the guitar, one of his hands needs to strum the guitar and one of his hands needs to go and form the chords. So, what I did was I added two child of constraints. The first one will be parented to his left hand so that I can just turn it on while I need to stay in his hand. And the second one is parented to his root bone so I can still move it around while animating but the guitar won't follow the hand movements. This rig helped automate all of this so that I don't have to do any animation matching in the end. Now it's the time for the thing I was putting off the most animation. I'm not really that good at animating and I was hoping that I wouldn't butcher the animation completely, but I had to start somewhere. So first thing I did was made an off pose for the animatronics so that they can just stay there and look like they're powered off. After that, I made a powering up animation. This was quite simple. All they needed to do was lean up a little bit and look at the person. To make the animation more robotic here, I went to the curves editor and changed all of the interpolations to use the back preset. And I also changed the easing to in and out, so it looks like they uh, wind up a little bit and then overshoot, which in my opinion makes them look a little more robotic. Then I needed a song for them to animate off of, preferably something from the 80s with a lot of guitar, piano, and a strong vocal. So I went for Soft Cell's Tainted Love, because I think that song checks all the boxes and it just really sounds nice. So, I downloaded an mp3 and loaded it up into the Blender project through the video sequencer. I moved the audio to start a little after the animatronic startup so I can have a reference to animate the movement off of. Pro tip, if you go into the timeline and open the playback dropdown and go to the top and change it from play every frame to frame dropping, the audio will never get desynchronized even if your timeline is running at a slower frame rate. 
So for the animation, I decided to go for simple, repetitive movements, because I didn't want to animate too much. Freddy was simple, his part only comes in when the vocals come to. So before that, I just made his head bob to the beat, and once the vocals come in, I just made his eyes and body rotate randomly, and his jaw moves to the words as close as possible. For Chica, since their hands aren't visible, I don't have to worry about finger placement on the piano. I just need the arms to go up and down to the beat, kind of. For that one part where it sounds like the piano key is spammed, I just matched that movement with her hand, and for the other parts, I just went up and down and made it look like they're making chords with their hands. For Bonnie, I just strummed the guitar to the beat and moved his hand randomly along the fretboard to make it look like he's making chords as well. For the part in the beginning where he has to do nothing, I just made him look around and wait until his part comes back in. Looking back, the animation actually wasn't that hard. Uh, since most of the movements were quite repetitive, and since I moved them around a little bit every so often, it looks like I did more than I actually did. Also, those random movements of the eyes, the ears, and the mouth sometimes makes it look a bit more natural than how repetitive it is. All these animations were also made with that same robotic technique that I was talking about earlier. Finally, now was the time to render. I rendered everything with a PNG sequence, but I rendered them at 1080p, even though the reference video is at 4K, because I thought it still looked quite natural and it cut the render time down by almost a third. I brought all the clips into DaVinci Resolve and added the background video into the timeline. Then I created a new timeline with a resolution of 1080p and put all the images into there. I also set all of them to one frame so they look like an animation. I brought that second timeline back into the first one. It imports as a clip and not a sequence of images, so it's easier to edit. I did some light color grading and added a few effects to make the scene match a bit more with my render. By the way, if you're also using a log video from either an iPhone or a Samsung, you can go into the color workspace and go to the LUT tab. And in there you can search either Apple or Samsung and you'll have two LUTs that you can drag onto the node on the right. And that'll correct all the color from your videos. In my opinion, I don't think it makes too much of a difference, but if you do know how to color grade, I think that would be better. So now that everything looked nice, we need to add some audio. The video that I made didn't have my voice because there was already a lot of noise going on in the background. I thought it would be better to voice over later. But I don't want it to sound like a voiceover. I want it to sound like something that was recorded on my phone. So that's what I did. I just recorded another video on my phone and kind of voiced over that footage that I already had. Then I put that back into DaVinci and put that as an audio clip and it all mixed up perfectly. I got a few mp3s of some mechanical noises, but I thought it would take forever to match each noise to each movement, so instead I just added them randomly and made them really quiet so it sounds like there's some noise going on, but you can't really tell what's exactly happening. And anyways, you can't really hear that mechanical noise underneath the song, so it works. Speaking of the song, I wanted it to sound like it came out of a really old speaker and it was recorded on a phone mic. So what I did is I played the song on my speaker and recorded it on my phone again to get that kind of echoey noise. And then I went into uh, this program called Audacity, I'll link it down below, and I went into the EQ settings and changed the preset to telephone. And then I tweaked it a little bit to make the bass come out a little more. And it sounded like it came out of an old speaker and it was recorded on my phone. So now everything was in place. I put the audio and the video together and it looked perfect. But there is still one thing that I haven't told you yet. Um, the video just kind of ends, you know, ends at an awkward moment especially. It ends while they're saying a word in the song. I didn't know how to end it because if I had a proper ending, the song would be too short and I couldn't just record it again because I already did the whole nights of rendering and I didn't want to do all of that over again. So instead of brewing a proper ending, I just did this. Yep, I copyright claimed the video. So it has kind of a natural ending and it makes sense for it to be stopped abruptly. I know it's kind of lazy, but I couldn't really think of anything else. Maybe I could have done a jump scare, but you know what? This is much scarier in my opinion. So with that all being said, how does the final product even look like? Well, here you go. Enjoy. Look at these cool things I found over here in the scrapyard. There's like these giant animatronic things. They actually look sick. So I brought them in and look at the craftsmanship on these things. I don't know who built them and put them in a scrapyard, but look at this. 
If I turn them on, they can play some music as well. Ready? Alright. Oh, there we go. Ready? So how was it? Really? Well, I liked it too. And there's some things that I wish I could have changed after, you know, making the whole thing. For one, I wish I did record a little longer so I could have some more space in putting an actual ending to the video. Another thing is that I think the lighting is still slightly off. It could be done better. If I had like a 360 camera or something, I could make an HDRI of the whole location. But they're quite expensive and I think the lighting did more than enough. It's just, if I had that, it would push it the extra mile. Another thing is that the shadows don't look that good on the couch. I think maybe next time I could use like a 3D scan of the environment or something to make the geometry a bit more accurate. Also, I think the animatronics materials could be done a little better as well because they look good from afar, but once we go up close, especially when I went up close to Freddy's mouth, it kind of falls apart there. But overall, I think I'm really happy with this project and how it turned out. But I want to hear your thoughts as well. Tell me down in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you have some other suggestions? Or do you just want to say hi? Also, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. But until next time, I guess I'll see you.